morning and welcome to Moments with Melinda. I am Melinda Moulton and I'm your host today and I have two extraordinary guests. I'm so excited. I can't stand it. I have with me Bobby Cochran and Barbara Ann Cochran. Hi guys. How are you? Hi, we're great. Melinda. I'm good. <laughs> I am so glad that you agreed to be on my show. Now, let me just share with my viewers, if they don't know about you, which everybody knows about you, you are both icons locally, nationally, and internationally for your accomplishments in ski sport. And it's really an honor to have you today because all of the Cochran's in the family have won a total of 19 national champions. What a family, what a legacy, <laughs> right? So now I start, when I talked to you before I started the show, I, I, I said, I know that you're both, your family members are very humble and understated. And, um, and I love that so much about your humility. I think it makes you very spe special, but today, I want you to sing your praises for who you are and the legacy that you leave all of us here in Vermont and around the world. So first off, and I'm, and your brother and sister, I should tell you that now, now, Barbara, Ann, are you, where do you land in the family? Are you the oldest? No, I'm next, uh, next to the oldest. You're next second. to your second and then Bobby's third and then Lindy's last, right? Right. Okay. So tell us about growing up in the Cochran family and being the children of Mickey and Ginny Cochran. Tell us about your parents who raised four kids who all went on to be ski prodigies. You, Bobby, you, Barbara, Ann, and then there's Marilyn and Linda. Tell us about that growing up with your parents. Well, I feel like for me, um, when we were little, it was like the three older ones because the, the uh, Marilyn, Linda, myself, and Bobby, um, I feel like I'm an Irish triplet because I'm 11 months younger than Marilyn and 11 months older than Bobby. And Bobby and I, actually, Bobby and I were born in the same year. I was born in January. He was born in December. And so in skiing, every time we moved up to an, a new age group, we moved up together because it was done by the year rather than, than um, you know, by your actual age. And, uh, but it was just, I, I just felt like my mom was a stay-at-home mom. It's like... Um, Growing up, we 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 had a wonderful childhood. We we ended up, um, you know, my parents were really they loved sports. So, and my mom, I think she survived being a stay-at-home mom by making sure that we played outside all the time. Um, I don't know, Bob. Add add in here. You can take us a little bit more. Oh, uh, it. You know, it it felt like we grew up together. Um, there was certainly a hierarchy. My father was the boss. He was definitely the boss. Even though my mom truly was the boss, even though my father didn't know it. But then, of course, the real boss from our perspective, especially Barbara Ann and myself, was my sister Marilyn. So she was sort of like the uh, drill sergeant. And you couldn't say no to Marilyn. But... But truthfully, I, I, I think we grew up in a special time, in a special way, yeah. and we're always doing stuff together that was outside and it was active. And, and uh, unfortunately, my sister Lindy got dragged along, um, but I think she doesn't regret a second of it either. Yeah, wow. it's a beautiful yeah. family. So in, in 1972, all four of the Cochrane children were on the U.S. ski team at the 1972 Olympics. Tell us about that, about competing with your siblings all together. Yeah. That's amazing. So, um, yeah, so so all of us had the chance to possibly make the, the Olympic team in 1972. Lindy um, was the youngest, and, and uh, um, unfortunately, she, she had had some injuries, so... Uh, she she actually didn't make the team. Um, so the three of us actually made the team. We, we all competed in 1972 at Sapporo, Japan. Um, and uh, Marilyn, Bobby, and I, like, so anyway, so I don't know. Can I brag right here? And, and yes, and you, and you won. Well, I was going to say, and you won the gold. Yeah, and let's, I won the gold medal. Let's yeah. go for it. You, yeah. you, this, is a, this is a brag fest. I expect you to share okay. all of your important accomplishments with my yeah. view. So go I right, go ahead. Like, I feel like the 72 Olympics, it was like Marilyn just carried the weight 
on her shoulders with um she just felt like she she should be she should win i think she felt like she should win every race that she was in and she was in all three the downhill the giant slalom and the slalom and um and she she was capable of doing that you know but i think that she she became kind of a head case too at the same time that that it was really difficult for her. i think being the oldest in the family being a perfectionist um you know she felt like like she should she had to to do well for for um the u.s ski team for vermont for the family for for you know just everybody and she kind of fell apart at the olympics and um and I kind of just went along and and was there, you know, like I was used to being second best growing up um, to Marilyn in in our races, and and so I got used to not not winning. And in 1972, like the thing I remember about 1972 was I actually only did win two races that year, and. Uh, the, the first was the Olympics slalom. And then the second one was the sugar slalom at Stowe, <laughs> which was really, you know, just this fun race and stuff. And so it's going, well, my record, you know, if you look at my record, it's not that great. <laughs> well, well, I think so. it's terrific. So Bobby, what about you being at the, being in the 72, in the skiing with your siblings? And well, you know, for me, the thing I, I would really like to say is, you know, being a ski racer, especially back then, you know, which is ancient history when we were racing, but we spent the whole, a vast majority of the time racing in Europe. And so, and we did not have Skype or cell phones or we didn't have any contact with the colonies. So we were on our own. And I was so blessed to have my three sisters nearby we it seemed like back then we we would have races that were within at least within an hour of each other so i really relied on my sisters for support um because it's a very lonely existence um the olympics for me were such a blur um i raced all three races so it feels like i showed up and immediately had to start downhill training we had a day off for the opening ceremonies which was Incre incredibly moving, I have to say. Um, and then just went through and raced the downhill and then trained a day and raced the giant slalom and uh, trained and did a qualifying race and then raced the slalom. But, but of course, the highlight for me, I was, we had trained in the morning on the day of Barbarian's slalom race. And, um, but then my, her boyfriend at the time, Rick Chaffee, and I went to the finish of the slalom. And it was a miserable day. It was a horrible day. And it was foggy and snowing. And you could see about, I don't know, three and a half feet in front of you. You couldn't see it all. So we knew BA was on the um on the course for her second run. She had we knew she had won the first run and we knew it was very close. And so we we were standing there watching the clock, knowing and the clock's ticking, but we didn't know anything. We didn't know what was going on. We didn't know if BA had fallen. We didn't, we didn't know anything. And, and then B, all of a sudden- BA is Barbara Ann. BA is Barbara right. Ann, I'm right. sorry. That's okay, yes. no, 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 go ahead. We've always called her BA, but Barbara Ann was on the course and, and then like a miracle, she, she came out of this fog and snow and made a couple of turns and went through the finish. And we looked at each other and we sort of didn't know if she'd won, but we knew she was either first or second. And so we decided, well, we're gonna just jump the fence. So we jumped the fence, ran over, put her up on our shoulders and she was pretty tiny. So it was, we could manage it. We didn't drop her or anything, but <laughs> Barbara Ann said that that's when she realized she had won, even though we had no idea whether she won or not. But we were just so excited that she came through the snow and through the finish that we had to do it. It's outstanding. What a beautiful story. Now, Barbara Ann, your, your son, Ryan Cochran Siegel, just won the silver in the 2022 Olympics and was the first Cochran of this generation to win the World Cup. Can you talk about this and your feelings about that? I know this was just 
an extraordinary so it, experience. Yeah, it, it's like, you know, I tried to, um, it was his second Olympics and, and at the first Olympics in 2018, when he went to, to um, Pyeongchang, I, like I wanted to let him know that there are so many people that, that can get on the podium. And I said, including him, you know, and, and he, didn't, he didn't do that at, at those Olympics. But it's like, so I, I felt like the same thing for him going to these Olympics and that, that um, he, he, he ha actually had had some results in, in ski racing and, and um, had come in first, had come in second. So he actually had been on the podium in World Cup races. And um, I wanted him to understand that, that um, just even going to the Olympics is such a special thing that, that it's not all about winning the medals or anything. If you win a medal, then it, it's icing on the cake, you know, it's, but you've got to be so proud of just being one of the few people that, that make your country's team, that that's such an honor in itself. And, um, and so, I mean, I was like, there was a lot of, a lot of, um, attention on Ryan because he was one of the U.S. skiers that that had been kind of uh, the media had had felt that he was capable of, of winning a medal and um, you know but NBC like they they thought they were kind of pinning it on the downhill and they had it all set up for a viewing party at Cochran's and and then um, and then that that day got canceled for the next day so they, but they wanted my input as well. And uh, they, they weren't really expecting it for the Super G. And, um, and then, and, and they, uh, so, so I was, I mean, it was in, in China. So it was like the, the timing was, it was, you know, past my bedtime when he was racing. So, so I would get into bed and, um, and then have my laptop and watch him. And, and then, so for the Super G, like I, I, I started screaming and, and I woke my daughter up because she doesn't like to watch him live. And I was going, go Ryan, go Ryan, go Ryan. I was just so excited. And, and I just, I felt like he was capable of doing that. That didn't surprise me that, that he, he got a medal, but, um, but just so proud. And it just, I mean, it makes me cry. Every time I think about it, it just makes me cry. Well, congratulations to your beautiful son. And I think it made all of us very, very proud. Um, so Bobby, back to you, my friend. Between 1970 and 1973, you won the prestigious Hanaham Downhill in Kitzbühel, Austria, which is the toughest and most famous downhill races in the world. Can you share with us a little bit about that accomplishment? Um. Yeah, I, I, um, well, I didn't win the downhill. I won the Hun and Kong combined, combined, which well, I... is sort of used to be the the premier trophy that you could win. It's sort of like winning the Masters or Wimbledon or something. I mean, in in Austria, skiing is a religion, and uh, Kitzbühel is hard to describe. It, it's one of those places where you really have to go. Um, I went back because my son Jim was racing in the slalom at the Hanukkah. Thank God he was not racing the downhill because I don't think my heart would have taken it. It is so scary. And um, the thing I would add about Ryan is the year before his Olympic silver medal in Super G, he had fallen in Kitzbühel and broken his neck. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was so scary watching. But anyways, sorry, BA, to and, bring and up made, that and then, made, yeah. and then made that amazing <laughs> comeback. Yeah. But, um, but it's just one of those things that, I don't know if it seems real still, but it, I'm very proud of it and you know, I don't know if I appreciated it. In fact, I do know that I didn't appreciate it at the time. Um, you know, you just, you're a kid and you're racing and you're doing your best. And I remember, I, in the downhill, I came in third. I came in third. The first and the second places were um, Roland Colombin and Bernard Roussy, who are 
arguably two of the greatest downhill races ever. And the person in fourth was an Austrian, an Austrian racer by the name of Franz Klammer, who, was, who is, uh, probably not arguably, who is the greatest downhill racer ever. So that's one of the things I'm the most proud of. What a legacy, my friend, what a legacy. Now, Barbara, you wrote a book, Skiing for Women. And I assume that it's still in publication, right? And yeah, also, I, I actually didn't write it. There's a chapter about me. In okay, there. about you in it. Okay. And then also you wrote for the, for the uh, Washington Post. And you have yeah. a business, Golden Opportunities in Sports, Business, and Life. Are you still? Yeah, which I, I, I kind of, that was like a title that I started with, but now. Um, what do you do? I just call it uh, Barbara Ann Cochran Coaching, BA Cochran Coaching. BA Cochran Coaching, and people can find you on the web. So, and yeah. you probably coach on sports, business, and life, right? Well, it, mostly what it's evolved as it is um, coaching uh, the mental side of competition for athletes. I mean, I do, I talk to parents, I, I talk to teams, I, I talk, but I, and I haven't really, um, my idea when I first started doing it was, you know, that I would uh, do it for businesses and, and, and really as it's evolved, it's really, I, I talk to, I talk to mostly athletes. Athletes, you're a mentor for how to help them, how to help them in competition. Well, I think that's what your family's done throughout their whole, the legacy of the Cochrane family. So Share with my viewers a little bit about the Cochran Ski Area, which is family owned and operated. I think, I think Bobby, your son um, is the general manager. And what does it mean to you all as a family, to the community and to the sport of skiing? Talk about the Cochran Ski Area. Well, well I, I think the ski area, yeah, when ahead, you mention Bobby. the ski area, you mean really you're talking about my dad. Because yeah. he's the one that really started it all. It was his dream. And, um, you know, now it's a nonprofit ski area, although I tell everyone that um, it's oh, always yeah. been a nonprofit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My parents never made profits. They lived off depreciation. Yeah. Um, but it's just, I think it's a little gem. Um, and And the best part to me, the best part of, the ski area is to see all the young, young and old racers and the, the families that go there. It's it's just a community meeting places where you just make memories. Well, yeah, well it, it's, you know, one of the things that like over the years, there's been kids that have, you know, learned to ski at, at Cochran's and, and, uh, one, like, it amazes me, like, there, there was somebody out in, I think it was San Diego, or out, out west, someplace that was at this big conference, I think it was like a technical engineering conference, or something like that, and there was somebody that was giving a speaker that had learned how to ski at Cochran's, and actually had raced at Cochran's, and somebody in the back said, um, did you used to ski at Cochran's? Yelled out. <laughs> <laughs> and I just think our reach is, you know, so much more than we realize. But I think it's like, I, I just, there, there's another parent that when he says he comes up to the, the goes up the hill and to the upper parking lot, and he, he makes that, that crest of, of getting to the parking lot, he calls it Prozac Mountain. And he says, there's just such a piece about it, you know, that it's just very comforting and, and very, you know, and it, it, it's, um, it's not elaborate. It's not, it's very, it is, it's very comforting to, to go there and to bring your family and to, to ski. And, and it's very community based. I think that there's a lot of community for, um, for Cochrane. And, it, and it's very, and it's very different than um, what we're seeing today in the ski industry. And one of my questions was that this Cochrane ski area has created some of Vermont's finest skiers. And I wanted you to talk a little bit about the mythology, which you did just now, and about the magic. And, and so you just shared with us a little bit about the magic around the, the area. It hasn't really changed that much in, since your dad you know, and mom first bought the land and created the ski area, there's some snowmaking. And, um, but the magic is peace and community 
and the fact that you're opening your hearts to the community to come into your family. And exactly. it's, it's like opening your home to people. Right. So they're surrounded by your energy and who you are as a family and as, as human beings. And you're letting people come into that. And that's the magic. Would I be correct, Bobby? I think, yeah, it's interesting. You said your home. It, it, I always, I think we want it to be home for a bunch of people. And it's interesting. The original lodge, I think this is one of the advances because the original lodge used to be my mother's kitchen and she would make a batch of brownies or something. And that would be nourishment for the skiers. So now we have a separate lodge that's from my enough. mother's oh, kitchen. Wow, so that's you're one of the major you know. advances. <laughs> well, she would make brownies for, for us for dessert and they'd be smelling, they'd be out on the counter. And then so there, there was uh, some skiers that like came in, some kids came in to try and, and they couldn't stand just the smell of the brownies. They, they tried one. And then before they were done, they had eaten the whole pan, but that wasn't for them. She never made them for them. It was like, not until we got the lot, the, the old lodge was that, that we provided nourishment. Well, it's interesting that you both have these two different views. So Bobby, I want to ask you that you went into medicine. I don't know how many people out there know that you are a physician and you became a family practitioner in New Hampshire and you have since retired. And I know that you were the ski coach at Rice High School because my granddaughter, Taylor skis for your team. So I don't think a lot of people knew that you were a practicing physician. Did you ever practice in Vermont or? Um, well, I practice in a little town called Walpole, New Hampshire, which is right on the Connecticut River. Um, so I would make, uh, I would take care of a lo lot of Vermont patients that lived across the river. Across the river. Well, so I felt like I was always a part of Vermont. Well, Dr. Cochran, I didn't know that. And I love running into you at Rice when I'm picking up. So I want to share with you a little bit. I have a question for you. And that today's world is complicated. And our youth are living during a time of climate change, pandemics, and a shaky political system where democracy is at risk. What do you tell your own children and your grandchildren to steady them to face the world that they live in? What's the Cochran message to our youth? about getting through what children are facing today? I mean, I think um, I learned a lot. It, it's been a real treat for me coaching the Rice High School. <laughs> not, not only coaching your granddaughter, Taylor, but um, anyways, the thing I realized is getting outside and moving and using all this energy that kids have, that's where it's at. Well, they and, say, uh, well they've been, they have interviewed students across the country and they said the number one issue for, for, for high school students and middle school students too is their mental health. And so getting outside and nowadays, a lot of kids just, they're sitting on their phone, they're in their bedrooms, you know, TikToking yeah. or whatever they do. And you're, so you're, the word of wisdom from you, Bobby, is you need to get outside and you need to yeah. feel the air and you need to feel the wind in your hair and get out and enjoy nature. That's your, that's your words of wisdom. That's a good message. And I'm, I'm going to put that up on tweet, Twitter today. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Marilyn? What's your message for the youth today? Um, Barbara Ann. Um, Barbara Ann, I'm sorry, Barbara Ann. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. Barbara Ann. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I totally agree that like, like, I think um, that it is, it, there's a huge part of just getting outside, enjoying the fresh air and, and being part of that. And I think it's like, uh, when you get overwhelmed with life, it's like breaking it down and, and taking it little steps at a time, like, like just taking, you know, one, one day at a time. And if it has to be one minute at a time, then you do one minute at a time, it, it, but breaking it down into the smaller steps and and uh, any problems that arise, you go, okay, yeah, I can I can handle it if I do, you know, the, the first step, just take that first step. Great advice, Barbara Ann. So now I wanna talk uh, briefly, we're coming down to the end of the show. I can't, can't believe it, I could talk to you for hours. What about the youngest generation of Cochran's? Um, because this legacy that your parents began in 1961 when they instilled in the rope toll on the hillside in, in Richmond, 
it still lives on in your grandchildren. Um, so, and I, and I, and I certainly have seen, I, I believe it's Charlie who is at, the, is at all the races and we're like, oh my, <laughs> I mean, who's just blowing everybody off the hill. And so talk to us a little bit about the, your beloved grandchildren and the legacy that, that you've left for them and what they're all up to over there at the Cochrane's ski hill. You want to go, Bob? Yeah, I just, I love watching every single one of my grandchildren. Uh, I have five grandchildren within five miles. And um, the three oldest are my son Tommy's children. And they're the three boys that are very active. And um, they haven't raced to speak of, although I'm grooming them to be uh, part of the Rice Alpine ski team. So we'll see about that. But um, <laughs> the thing I always love about any kid that I think that grows up at Cochrane's or grows up skiing in Vermont is they can go anywhere in the world and they'll be one of the best skiers on the mountain. So no matter their skiing success or failure or whatever, they can always enjoy this sport and and you know i i'm hoping that climate change doesn't make doesn't take away our great sport i every fall the first snow i was like please please let it snow <laughs> so uh, and when you see the white stuff life is good yeah it's and good. and for me like i think that the the um the this next generation our our kids uh, children like our grandchildren it is um you know some of them just uh, love to ski like I, I have a grandson that that really took to skiing last year um at the age of of four and um like I was telling Bob the other day I said you know I I don't think that he's gonna really want I don't I don't see him as getting into ski racing, but he loves to ski. And I think that's interesting with, with that generation is that there are some that just love ski racing and, and then the others that just love the skiing part. And I think that's what, you know, is, is important to us is, is just that, again, they're outside, they're enjoying the, the nature, they're, they're um, have that experience. And, and, uh, and, it, that in itself is is just um, it's enough for us that they enjoy being outside and being in nature. And and there's this whole new extreme skiing now that is actually very common in all the areas of you know flips and jumping off of you know I mean it's a uh, it it and and skiing is changing. I mean the skis have changed. It's a very it's very different. And um, so. So the future of skiing is is changing, but there is that concern about snow. Now, yeah. I, I I believe because of the lake that we'll always have good snow in Vermont, um, but that's a bit that's a big wish. Um, yeah, I'm gonna hold you to it. Well, yeah. I, I I think we're lucky to have the lake and that lake effect that comes over the yeah. Green Mountains and drops its snow. And you have installed some snowmaking at 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 Crockins, right? Right. Because yeah. now the ski areas are open until May. I mean, Killington and Jay and I mean, people are skiing in May and that was unheard of back in our generation. Right. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You know, I remember if you had good any snow in by the end of March, you were happy. And now at Cochrane's, I always I, look, I remember a couple of years ago looking over and there was a really decent patch of snow in May. Yeah. Well, there you have it. So there's great hope and future, not only in the future of skiing, but also the future of the Cochrane's with this incredible legacy of young up and comings, whether they're going to race or not, they're always going to be the best skiers on the mountain. And um, to the two of you who are just so rich in all the beauty of humanity and all that you do, and look at how strong and healthy you are. So it's a testimony to all of us to get out and to enjoy the nature and to put on those skis and get out there as soon as we can. Um, uh, so I want to thank you both, uh, Barbara Ann, B.A. Cochran and Bob Cochran. And um, Bobby, I'll see you at Rice and I'll we'll certainly see you on the mountain when when the girls are racing down um, for G. Well, Addison's with GMVS this year. So you'll see her, her race oh, down the mountain. And, um, <laughs> 
and stay in touch. And I want to thank you for your time. I could talk to you for hours. Um, and I love your little, what's the name of your cat that's behind you, VA? What's the, uh, who is that beautiful creature? Kingsland. 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 Well, he is, and he's been sitting there behind your, your back this whole time. So we've gotten, <laughs> he's been looking over your right shoulder. So, yeah. <laughs> So I want to thank you for your time and for everything that you do for our community. You really are a legacy and you're so important to, to Vermont and, and nationally. So on that note, I'm going to wish you well and wish you a beautiful day and I will see you on the mountain. And to my viewers, thank you for joining me and I will see you all very soon.